Welcome back. Muslims have lived in Canada for over 100 years. Did you know that Canada's oldest mosque was built in Edmonton in 1938? Canada's Muslim community has come a long way since, overcoming obstacles and contributing to Canadian society along the way. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Kathy Bullock, president of the Tesselate Institute. The Tesselate Institute is a research institute that explores and documents the lived experience of Muslims in Canada. We'll ask Dr. Bullock about how documenting the lived experience of Muslims can help strengthen Canada's cultural mosaic. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you. So what role does Tesselate Institute play when it comes to understanding the social and academic context of Canadians? Tesla Institute is a Muslim-owned, if you like, uh, institute, non-partisan, uh, non-political, where we are trying to basically give Muslim ownership over the discourse about Muslims. There's a lot in the news about Muslims, and most of it's negative. And Muslims are talked about a lot, but there aren't always a lot of spaces for Muslims to make their own voices heard. So the Tesla Institute aims to bring Muslim voices to the fore uh, from a very specific point of view, basically academically sound. We aim for professional standards in ethics, objectivity, so that it's quality data, but Muslim, uh, Muslim generated. Now, some people might say, well, you know, what difference does that make if you're doing objective research? It shouldn't make a difference, and in an ideal world, I guess it wouldn't, except that we know there's no such thing as true objectivity. Everyone speaks through a lens, through a perspective, and there are certain experiences that one has in one's life which affects how you interpret the world around you. And so we know that the Muslim community might be aware of issues that are affecting them more than someone else who's outside that community, and so we can use our, our experience, our self-knowledge to bring out perspectives that might otherwise be neglected. So can you uh, share a little bit about Tesla as, a, as an organization title? Tell me a little bit about how that came about. Okay, so the Tesla Institute in 2000, and I think it was 2005, I started to feel the need for a Muslim, uh, a Muslim research institute. We know that there are a lot of Muslim academics working through the, in, in the Canadian uh, university system, but in terms of um, research that's more publicly accessible, not heavily jargonistic, not, sort of disi not overly disciplinary, there, there really isn't a, a platform for Muslim scholarship. And I felt this most keenly during 2005 when we had the big uproar in Ontario about the Sharia uh, mm -hmm, yes. uh, the Sharia debate, the arbitration issue, and it was, again, a lot of negative stuff coming out. And I really felt like Muslims aren't having an, an opportunity to bring quality points of view to this debate. So we need quality research. And I got together with a few people, and you know how it is when you're trying to establish an organization, there's a lot of talk, 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 and you have to go through the bylaws Everyone, and all that, yes. and the <laughs> names, and so, uh, we thought, well, maybe we'll name it after the first Canadian Muslims. So okay. the first Canadian Muslims uh, at the time were known to be James and Agnes Love. Cool. They come out from Scotland <laughs> in eighteen, in eighteen, what was it, eighteen ninety or something? And then that was like, so that's the Love Institute. Well, that's not going <laughs> to work too well. So then there were other things, you know, the multicultural Institute, all kinds of stories. So then I was looking through the thesaurus. We, Smart we thought the uh, Mos Mosaic Institute, but that already exists. And then I saw a synonym for mosaic was tessellate, tessellation. So tessellation is a form of mosaic making. And it turns out that it was an artistic, uh, it was an artistic product that the Muslims were really, really excellent at in the Middle Ages. If you have a look at some of the mosques, they're covered with the most beautiful tessellations on the inside. And Canada's supposed to be a mosaic, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the Canadian mosaic. So I thought, well, this word really captures the Muslim heritage and the Canadian heritage, and it brings it all together in a really unusual word. And a lot of people were very not so sure this is a great idea. I've, I've got a friend in Australia, and she said to me, you know, people are going to say the what institute, the Tess Institute, the what's, the what's that? <laughs> and so she said, you're going to have a problem with branding. Okay. 
And she's probably, I think she's partly true because I'd say, you know, hi, I'm Kathy from the Tesla Institute. And they go, the what institute? <laughs> um, but on the other hand, it's such a unique word. Once they yes. finally understand what it is, then it kind of sits. And it feeds into, I guess, the overall work that you're doing, which is really about highlighting the positive image of Muslims. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Can you uh, share with our viewers some of the projects that you're working on? I know there are a couple that you're focused on uh, where it really is about you know, sharing a positive image of Muslims, so the Neglected Voice Projects and the Seniors Project. So if you can share okay. some information on that. Well, first of all, I just want to say it's not actually that we're trying to bring a positive image of Muslims because an image is just, you know, something that's constructed, yeah. right? It's maybe not even real. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is bring out Muslim experiences. And yeah. in the Muslim experiences in Canada, there are both positive and negative. And unfortunately, the mainstream news media tend to only ever highlight the negative. So we almost never hear about the positive Muslim experiences. And sometimes the negative experiences themselves bring about a positive experience. So we thought, especially uh, the time uh, there was a lot of stuff about the radicalization and the alienation of Muslim youth, but I knew from my experience in the Muslim community that most youth, well, maybe they, I mean, most youth are not feeling alienated. They're not going to the mosque and getting turned anti-Canadian. This is just not happening. What is happening is a much more multi-layered, um, confusing, if you like, experience between being feeling like you belong and feeling like you pushed out. So we thought, let's give the youth a chance to speak their stories. So we applied for and we got funding from the Toronto Arts Council to do a project where we interviewed four Muslim youth. It's called Point of View five minutes each, where they speak their narrative. And we ask them to focus on stories of uh, struggle and discrimination, and then uh, how they had overcome or how that had helped them challenge them or push them to a new part of their life. So we had uh, two male and two female. We did that on purpose. We always wanted to try to balance. get gender balance mm -hmm. in, our, in, our, in our stories. And each of the youth spoke about um, some negative experiences they had of discrimination or racism, but how uh, it had honed them in certain ways or made them rise to the challenge or they wanted to become a social justice advocate or it had made them um, you know, love these parts of Canada and wanted to improve those parts of Canada and work to make sure the bad parts of Canada um, were overcome. And so they were really beautiful stories of challenge and success. We then completed the project. The videos are up f uh, on our website. And we've had several screenings all around uh, Toronto, G uh, Ontario, even uh, out in Halifax. They've been used wow. for, a, for a, a Muslim youth panel. And we've had such a wonderful response every time we've shown that. Sometimes we've had a panel discussion where we bring in the filmmaker, who I should mention is Joad Jaffrey from Iman Communications, who did an absolutely fantastic job. Uh, and some of the interviewees we've had, so we've had really interesting panel discussions. What I find about, and I've shown them in my class too, actually, because I teach a class on political Islam at the third year level. At the University at of... At U of T, mm -hmm. Mississauga campus. I don't show them every year, but every sometimes I show them. What I find is that the videos allow or give a space to Muslims in the class to say, yeah, that happened to me, or something like that happened to me. And the non-Muslim students who are watching can say, oh, you know, well, I kind of never really knew that, or I didn't see it from that point of view, or uh, it's just been a really wonderful way to generate dialogue. At one of the panels, we had a, a young man in the audience who works for, I think at the time it was uh, a Toronto school board or a York, I can't remember. And he said, you know what, this material, we need this in the classroom. So we said, develop this idea for us. So basically the idea became what we're calling now the curriculum pack. So the, each video is linked to a, um, a, a teaching theme in the Ontario curriculum. I think it's pitched towards the high school level, mostly grade 11 and 12, I think. And so we're developing activities 
that tie in not just from a Muslim experience but from more a generalized experiences so that other students in the classroom, so the teachers can use the videos to bring out a discussion and other students in the classroom can identify with some of the themes that that particular video highlights. So it's not just about the Muslim experience. So we're using the videos and we're developing the, the curriculum pack so that teachers don't have to do the work themselves. They can just download the teaching guide the videos are there and we're hoping that they'll find it an easy and useful uh, addition to flesh out one of their curriculum pieces. We have a grant from the Olive Tree Foundation to develop this project, which we're very grateful for, and we're hoping to have a launch sometime in the fall uh, at which we invite teachers um, public school officials and we think this material will be useful also for the Islamic high schools. I should probably mention by full disclosure to our viewers that I worked on that for a while. You so worked on that for yes. a while <laughs> as a volunteer and we're very grateful and you helped develop and I'd expand love to work it. it. Yeah. Uh, and now we're hoping that uh, the original person, Sultan Rana, will carry it to the finish line. So as we um, you know, as we're looking at, you mentioned, you know, it's really about raising awareness and, you know, academic quality. Um, what impact are you hoping these projects, and I know you also, you know, work on different initiatives like raising awareness about Muslim volunteerism. Um, there's also policy papers that you guys have worked on um, related to the Charter. What impact are you hoping as an organization to make um, on the Canadian um, community at large? We would like our work to be used as evidence and quality data f to inform the public debates that occur about Muslims. I said in the beginning there's a lot of negative stuff in the news media and most of it's based on anecdotes or ignorant stereotypes. Uh, there's very little that comes out of actual data. So we, we hope that the material we produce is top quality and therefore useful in these public debates so that people can feel that they are talking with knowledge rather than talking through ignorance. Awesome, and what does the, I guess just as we wrap up, what does the future hold um, for the Tesla Institute? I know it's a very loaded <laughs> question, but. <laughs> well, we've always been a group of small dedicated volunteers and we hope that we can expand our capacity that we can bring in more volunteers and ideally we'd like to bring in more finances so that we can fund wh what we do rather than do it based on volunteerism because volunteerism is absolutely essential and fantastic but it only goes so far. Mm -hmm. You always need financial components. So we would really like to get uh, uh, financial support and capacity support from people. And I'm really proud of the work we've done over the last, I mean it's not quite 10 years yet, but we've produced, I think, an impressive amount of top quality stuff from a small group of volunteers. And if we continue to do that, I'll be very happy. And if we can do more than that, I'll be even happier. And just as we wrap up, can you share, um, you've mentioned there are, have been quite a few top quality projects, so maybe one, uh, one project that's really personal and close to you that you could share. Well, one of the things that's very personal and close to me was we finished work on a, sen on a documentary about Muslim seniors. It's often thought that Muslims don't want to contribute to the Canadian society, that they want to you know, stick in little ghettos and keep to themselves. And so I love bringing out stories of volunteers. I actually edited a book, this has got nothing to do with <laughs> Tessellate, but I edited a book about Muslim women volunteers. And we did a documentary highlighting uh, Muslim volunteers who are, who are now seniors. They're in their you know, 70s, they've wow. been volunteering for over 40 years and they've made really amazing contributions to the Muslim community and also to the wider Canadian society. Just people who, you know, they actually, most of these people have won awards, one of them got the Order of Canada. Wow. But you know, volunteers, they often toil in the background, nobody really notices what they're doing, and yet they're there, and they're making a difference, they're making a positive contribution. And so I always really like to highlight these people because even though they don't always like the spotlight, I think we, we need to know their stories because they're inspiring and they're also, they're not, they're inspiring, but they're also, what's that word? I can't think of Motivational? the word. Motivational? No, that's inspiring. They're inspiring and they give you that sort of warm, fuzzy feeling that there are people out there who are Muslim who are trying to make Canada a better place. 
I know I haven't really looked at that project, but I'm definitely going to check it out on the website and everything else that you guys are doing. So thank you so much for coming on, Kathy. Thank you for having me.